All right, how's it going, everybody? My name is Mark. I want to do a video right quick that maybe um, could show the understanding of why recording consoles are set up the way they are. Um, I'm going to use my Behringer console here because this is, this is actually a, an actual recording console. A lot of times people see consoles, they think they're mixers. Mixers and recording consoles are actually, they can func function similarly, but they, they a recording console does something that mixing consoles do not. One of the things that you'll know about a mixing console over just a regular mixer is a lot of the times they're going to have inserts and direct outs on every single channel along with line inputs and mic inputs. Now, this particular console has 24 channels, so it has 24 mic inputs or preamps inside each channel. Um, now, some of the more lavish consoles are going to have phantom power and they're also going to have basically phase reverse switches on them, but this one does not. This one turns the, phase, the phantom power on per each channel. But because I use external preamps, I don't worry about using the, phase, the phantom power um, I don't worry about using the phantom power or the phase reverse because I got that on the preamp itself. So, in this particular console, how it's set up is that the console is designed to do two things. It's designed to monitor what you're going to record and it's also designed to monitor what you just recorded. And that's exactly how they are, that's what sets them apart. Um, what happens is you're going to have, like, for example, this one, even though this one has 24 faders, is really 24 inputs to listen to what you're going to record. And then there's an additional 24 channels to listen to what you just recorded coming from your recording source. In the old system, because this console was made in the 90s, um, back in the day, people still recorded to 2-inch tape or they still recorded to, like, ADATs or Tascam system like the Tascam D888s or something like that or the ADATs system like that so they would have these type of consoles are designed to multi multi-track record in other words you got 24 inputs to record most of the time a live band you would have maybe eight mics on for drums maybe another eight channels for your instruments such as bass, guitar, keys, things like that. And then you would have another eight channels to uh for the purpose of for the purpose of maybe vocals or something like that. Vocal mics or whatever the case may be. And what would happen is all your inputs for those all those microphones and instruments will all come here. On the inputs, where their microphones would go on the microphone inputs, any preamps, instruments, like for example, I have a couple of mic inputs coming from my, my preamp here, and then I have a, another set of channels uh, coming from my keyboard here. So, I would, um, so, basically... For example, while I hear my keyboard, I would monitor through the key. I would monitor through. I would monitor through um, my uh, console here. And what would happen is every single channel, every single channel would have direct outs, and the direct outs would be the direct outs that would be going into your record, which would go into the tape machine. And every single direct out. Now, all these inputs and outputs are done through a patch bay, but the concept is still the same. It's directly to leave the patch bay to go into the console. So we're just skipping the middleman. The patch bay is the middleman. So basically, your direct out. So if I was to sit there and I was, I'm going to draw up my DAW here and pull up Cakewalk here to show you what I'm talking about. So now that um, what would happen is, excuse me. So 
Because we don't use eight ads of tape machines no more, our recording source is our audio interface. It's basically our A to D, D to A converter, analog to digital, and then digital to analog converter. There are some audio interfaces that are that have separate interfaces. There are some audio interfaces that have that are strictly audio analog to digital, and that's the recording input recording source. And then there are another interface that would have the digital to analog, so you can hear what went to to the doll. So I'm going to start a new project here, so you can see the demonstration. So what's going on is that. What would happen is once you record it into your interface, you would have another set of, of outputs that would actually, um, let me see, I'm, gonna, I'm going to delete this track here. I'm going to control T, control T, control T. Okay. Now, I'm going to slide this here and I'm going to do the console. Let me set this up right quick. I'm not going to record anything. I just want you to physically see this. All right. Now, since our doll digital audio workstation has the mixer and it's our it's our tape machine, everything's done through the doll, right? That's how we do it today. Most people have been doing recording studios and they've been doing it modernly. It's been been doing like this for the last 20 years. Tape machines are still in use, but they're just slowly fading out as we just get better. I think the tape machines, you only have maybe a few studio, a handful of studios that might have tape machines. And that's only for people to, they just want to get the warmth and saturation of the tape machine. And they usually still bounce it into like some sort of doll like Pro Tools. So other than that, you're going to most likely work in the Pro Tools or of course, or you're going to work in Logic or Cakewalk or Studio One or Ableton Live or Reasons or Reaper or whatever your preferred doll. You're going to work that way anyway. So that's, that's I'm not telling any, anything, uh, I'm not telling anyone anything new on that aspect. Now, as far as the console with the direct outs, the direct outs are your resources that come directly out now. On the patch bay, you're going to see the direct outs. Everything's going to be marked on the patch bay. So all your microphone inputs for cha each channel. And to understand patch bays, that's a totally different video. But that's how it will be done for Since I don't have a patch bay down here, I'm not going to go into it. We're just going dir everything's directly into the console because I just don't have a ton of gear down here. Now, for the recording process, everything will be put on the input channels here, all the channels here makes it easy. If I want to plug any microphones, my preamps, like I got a preamp here, any instruments, all that stuff is plugged into the line or the mic inputs here. And then uh, all my direct outs, as you can see here, I have a direct out for, the mic, for my mic preamps that's coming into this channel. And then I have direct outs for my keyboards because that's only really two input sources that I have going because I record basically the keyboard parts one at a time and I record microphones parts one at a time. So for monitor for monitoring purposes only, I'm going to, for example, my microphone for the keyboard. So if I was going to record some keyboard parts, naturally I'm going to come up here and I'm going to set the input of my interface to re to receive the input of the of my interface so it can receive the signal from my keyboard. So now when I arm the track, it's going to see the signal there. As you can see, it's going to see the signal there. Let me see. All in the mixer as well as in the doll here. So that's how so that's where you will run direct out and because this meter bridge has what they call channel and tape. They called it tape because you, when you had the channel, you were inputting everything that you're going to record into your tape machine. You wanted to know what was being, you wanted to know what levels were on that particular channels. For example, the levels of my keyboard. So I would set the levels of my keyboard to, I got them exactly where I want it. 
I would gain stage them. In other words, get my level meters and I would get all that right. So, and I would look at that. And then any, any pieces of gear that I might want to insert, let's say I want to insert a compressor or something like that um, on there, I would do an insert on that channel as well. The same thing that I'm going to bring, because I don't want this mic to feedback, but I'm going to bring the level down, the mic levels down. So now, microphone, so now I'm going to unmute, and it's the same thing. So now you can see this level. So now let's say I would come to a different channel as an example. I'm going to unarm this channel. I'm going to go to channel 2. I'm going to arm it, and I'm going to have it set up so... There we go. Uh, let's see. Okay. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to gain stage my levels here. So now, even though I have it unmuted, you can see the signal. You can see the signal in the meter bridge. You can see the signal of the meter bridge there. And the direct out from the meter bridge is going into my audio interface right here. The direct outs are here going into my audio interface. You can see I got signal. So every time I talk, you can see the signal. When I stop talking, the signal stops. But So I can monitor this microphone right here. And you can see that I got it monitoring. So that's how I would do it. So I would monitor all my microphones, all my instruments and everything. And I can monitor everything. So I got the keyboards. I got the, you can see I got the keyboards and everything going Everything is going all at the same time. I got everything, so I'm monitoring everything when I'm recording. Okay. So now what's going to happen is the next thing after we get everything ready and levels checked for the, for recording, we're ready to start recording. So now I can start. I can start. Um, I can. Um, I can um, bring this down. Let me. So now I'm ready to record. So now I got my levels for, you can see my levels, this is the microphone level. See the microphone level there for that. So I got all my inputs on my audio interface. I got all my inputs set for my microphone. I got all my inputs for my key, for my instruments. And this would be done across the en entire channel count if I was gonna record 24 channels and I had an interface that took 24 inputs, I would set up my console like that. Now, what would happen next, let me meet this is now um, what happens is on these consoles you can see I got all my faders levels and all that faders this console also has a monitor input section to, re to, to hear what you just recorded as an example I'm going to shut this down and I am going to close I'm not going to save that I'm going to open up um another track and now what's well, now what I'm going to show you is now that we have this we're going to turn the volumes levels down on these tracks on these down so now all my I'm going to turn all my volume levels down so now all my levels are not so now I can listen to for example let's say I just got finished recording something now I have a second set of inputs I can listen to. So let's say I record this song, which is playing. So now what's going to happen is, so now I'm going to change my meter bridge to listen to what I just recorded. So, so, So now all my inputs, all my levels that I just recorded. So now I all I did was flip all the channels so I can actually hear, flip the channels here, and I can listen to the small faders here. And it still allows me to use the EQ and auxiliaries and everything else. So now I can start mixing what I just recorded. And all instead of all my instead of my returns for my interface, which normally a lot of people would have them plugged here, but 
there's inputs on the back of your console like I have eight outputs from my audio interface so all eight outputs are into channels 25 through 32 I can do all the way up to 48 so I, if I had 24 outputs I can set that and all I would have to do is change the console to listen to what I just got finished recording so to sum it up to sum it up what that means is I'm gonna stop this so what that means is let's say you had a, a console and you had so many channel inputs 24 32 48 doesn't matter and you need to record all 24 32 48 how many channels you got at the same time let's say you're recording a big orchestra or a band or something like that you can record and monitor everything in real time that way and then you would run your direct outs from each channel into your audio interface whatever it is i don't care what it is it could be Pro Tools, it could be a, it could be a Antelope, it can be a Apogee, it could be a Apollo, doesn't matter. If your interface can take that many inputs, then you can run all your inputs into that interface in real time. And then like a console like this, well, all you do is the outputs of the interface would go into a second set of monitoring inputs like this one does. So I could So now all I do is switch it from here from channel to tape. Tape is an old term, it's a 90s term, but now we, they, they ought to say channel to doll return or whatever. And now I can set that and I could come over here and hit the, all the switches and chain all the channel count. And now I can listen to what I just recorded in my doll. And I get the meter bridge going and I can still lit it, monitor everything. And I can still, on the recording process, I can use inserts on each channel and on my buses. And on the return process, when I get done recording something, I can still use inserts and bus channel counts that exact same way. So that allows you to use outboard gear like I got here on the recording process for inserts and bus inserts, as well as when I get fun is when I had got done recording something, I can use the after I get done recording. I can go back and do inserts on each channel and on buses as well, or I can multi-chain, multi-track, or, or I can not multi-track, but I can multi-chain, signal chain outboard gears if I had a lot of rack gear um, through my patch based system. But that allows you to hear what you just recorded as well. So that way you have a double count. That's why you'll hear a lot of people, some consoles you have to run through an auxiliary input, um, but most, most consoles only give you a limited amount of auxiliary inputs. That's why recording consoles give you split monitor. That's why you'll see like the large consoles that have small faders and big faders on them. This one actually has big faders and small faders. They're just not faders. They're just actually just you know basically volume knobs but that's just mix B and mix B is basically so you can hear um, a second sec a second mix usually to monitor what you just recorded but you just flip the switch on here and it lets you hear the other channels for the returns so that's how that works and that is pretty much the reason what how recording consoles benefit over just a regular mixer so to sum it up to sum it up so now you have 24 inputs to multi-track a band. You can listen to them in, in real time. You're, and you can input it, whatever preamps, whatever instruments, whatever you want on each channel. And if you're going to use the console's mic preamps, you know, you just have to make sure that if you're using ribbons or dynamics, don't use the phantom power. But if you're going to use um, a condenser mic, then you have to use the phantom power. But um, other than that, you would have to, um, you can use the console's mic preamps. Some people prefer to use the console's, the console's preamps. Um, other people prefer to use external preamps. Like I, I have a couple of preamps here. Some people prefer those preamps. It's just a matter of choice of the engineer. Some people prefer to use the console's preamps because they figure the console's preamps are just good enough. And also, with you using, with your live monitoring, it allows you to use the onboard, the onboard like EQs and if it had dynamics, gates or whatever, auxiliary sends and all that so you can send it to reverbs and headphone mixes and things like that. You can do all that 
while you're starting to record the multi-track this band. So you can set the console up and you can use outboard gear like compressors and everything else in the recording process. And then when you get done, you can flip, this, flip the board to listen to what you just recorded on a second set of monitoring faders. Um, and you can, or you can switch it to be able to use the same faders to mix. And it allows you to do it that way as well. And um, so that way you can now, and like for this typical console, you just have to flip here. From channel, that's usually for the recording process, and then you flip it here, so you know you can listen to what you just recorded, and I can monitor it. I can monitor the meter bridge here, so now the meter bridge is, you know, the track is playing, and I'm monitoring what I just recorded as an example, and everything's going routing through here, is routing through all my effect processors and and everything else, and coming through the bus and and so forth, and I can listen to it, you know, yeah. so. I can um I can listen to it and I can once again use the inserts to insert more compressors or whatever I need to do so you can do it on a on a recording process and then the mixing process. And that's what makes give consoles and is and this is the reason why studios prefer to use consoles for that very reason. It allows them to listen and monitor what they're going to record with zero latency because they're monitoring everything through the console not through your recording source such as your interface since we don't use tape machines anymore everything's done through an interface the front end or the inputs of your of your interface is what they call the A to D analog to digital the outputs coming out of your inner of your interface is what we call D to A digital to analog it is two devices in one so that's how that works and that's the pretty much the basics of the console so once again all my inputs that I'm going to record live if I'm going to record a band whether it's using my XLR inputs or quarter inch inputs I have them up here and then the returns of my audio interface are actually in the second set of outputs coming in these eight outputs right here are into the eight outputs here actually I got those reverse I need to see that blue girl I need to switch these I need to put this orange one here and I need to oh, yeah because I usually use gray for left orange for right but anyhow so I got all my returns from my interface in the back here and you can see I can do all 24 I got 24 additional inputs to do so I can listen to so I can route all the outputs of my mixing console from my software to the outputs of my audio interface to separately do the outputs and I can listen to like I said I can do instruments drums or whatever outputs one and two vocals three and four bass keyboards five and six and you know I can do um, maybe uh, other instruments seven and eight and so forth and it would all come through the console that way and I can start and then I can start putting inserting compressors on each channel if I need to I can route everything through the buses and do bus compression and stuff like that on the main buses so I can see these channels and you can do all that too so that's the, some of the benefits other than that that's the reason why most prefer uh, this is the reason why most recording studios especially the big ones prefer to use a console for this very reason there's four reasons the console does four things in it gives you a large amount of inputs it gives you uh, routing options it makes it gives it sound uh, there it definitely is an advantage to the sound of the console and fourth monitoring on the recording and the mixing process this is the reason why consoles are preferred uh, versus just in the box some people especially on the recording process you necessarily don't need it on the monitoring for the mixing because you got a lot of engineers that mix in the box but for the recording portion definitely they like to use a console on the recording process but it's a it's a preference some people prefer to do everything strictly in the interface and you don't have to use a console at all but there is some, a, a large amount of advantage especially for multi-tracking you don't have to worry about single tracking you don't really necessarily need the console for single tracking 
but you're definitely going to want one for multi-tracking, especially bands or orchestras or large amounts of ink count, um, counts where you're going to use a large, uh, quite a few preamps, instrument inputs, and things like that. Other than that, that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching, and y'all have a great one.